Hey. Not actual gameplay footage. This gotta be Smash. Yeah, it's Smash. Who killed Ganon? Yo. They about to throw Ganon off the cliff. This is Hey Hachi. This is Hey Hachi. This is Hey Hachi from Tekken. Yes. This is Hey Hachi from Tekken. Yo, it's Jin. Oh, Kazuya. Yo. Yo, it's Kazuya. Oh. Yes. The Tekken has to come to the Switch now. Tekken has to. I'm maining this character. Oh, look at the combos. Oh. And he killed off Captain Falcon. That's what I'm talking about. Oh man. And oh, we killing everybody. Yo. <laughs> and ooh. This this is my new main right here. I love Tekken. Oh man. Wow. I can't believe they put Kazuya in the game. Tekken has to come to the Switch now. Yes! <laughs> and Kirby, get out of here. You gonna float back up? Nice, Nintendo. That's nice. Greetings to everyone out there and welcome back to Around the Clock. As you can see from my reaction to Kazuya Mishima joining Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as Challenger Pack 10, I am hype. And I'm not just hyped because Kazuya is joining the roster, the entire Nintendo Direct had me hyped from beginning to end. This was a very impressive show and man, I was blown away. Now, just quickly speaking about Kazuya, I was so impressed to see how Masahiro Sakurai and his team incorporated every single signature move that Kazuya has in Tekken into Smash Ultimate. For those of you out there who are big fighting game fans like myself and who have played the Tekken fighting game series, you know that this is one of the most technical fighting games out there. There are a lot of button inputs that you have to press in order to pull off these moves, so it's really impressive to see that Sakurai and his team got this right. Kazuya even has his classic 10 hit combo in Smash Ultimate. I'm blown away man. Now. Masahiro Sakurai also announced the live stream presentation of Mr. Sakurai Presents Kazuya Mishima joining Super Smash Bros. Ultimate where he goes in depth with these characters and that's all going down on June 28th, 2021 at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, that's 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I will definitely be tuning into this because I'm a big fighting game fan like I said, so I can't wait for this presentation. Now. There were a lot of other big announcements during this Nintendo Direct presentation, starting off with Mario Party Superstars, which is a collection of different boards from the original Nintendo 64 game, and this looks really impressive. And I'm not gonna lie, this Mario Party game might be more impressive than the one that we have on the Switch right now. I'm just saying, man. The 64 game was really, really good, and I'm really surprised that they're bringing this to the Switch right now. It was confirmed that this game has over 100 mini games, and online play is fully supported for this game, so that's great news to hear. Mario Party Superstars is scheduled to release on the Nintendo Switch October 29th, 2021. Another huge title that was announced during this Direct was Metroid 5 which Nintendo properly named Metroid Dread. This game is the first mainline game to be released from the Metroid series in over 19 years. And this is a day one buy for me, no exceptions whatsoever. This game was made by Mercury Steam, the same team behind Samus Returns on the 3DS, and it has that same feel. Some of the same mechanics are within this game as well, but what really stands out is the visuals of this game and how fluid the action is. I'm so impressed by this, man. Mercury Steam and Nintendo took their time with this game and it really shows. 
This is the type of Metroid game that fans have been waiting on to come to the Nintendo Switch. That classic 2D style, but with some new age elements added in. As you can see how the camera zooms in and zooms out, it has those different action angles as well. I mean, come on, man. If you're not impressed by this, I don't know what to say because this is so cool to see. An Amiibo Double Pack was also announced for Metroid Dread. It features the new version of Samus and that Emmy character, which is one of the main villains of this brand new game. This is almost similar to the Double Pack Amiibo that we got for Samus Returns on the 3DS, so I'm going to try my best to get my hands on this. Metroid Dread launches exclusively on the Nintendo Switch October 8th, 2021. Another huge game that was announced at this Nintendo Direct that I know blew a lot of people away was a brand new WarioWare game called WarioWare Get It Together. This looks really, really cool, man. I mean, I played some of the WarioWare games back in the day, so I will be picking this up. It is unclear right now whether or not this game will have a physical copy. On Nintendo's website, they just have pre-orders open through the eShop, so I'm unclear on that at the moment. Hopefully, we do get a physical copy for this game because that'd be really cool to have, but if we don't, then it is what it is. WarioWare Get It Together is scheduled to release on September 10th, 2021. Now moving on to a game that we've been waiting 4 years to see some gameplay from and that's Shin Megami Tensei 5. And man, the wait was well worth it. This game is very very fluid, the gameplay is very impressive, the wide open landscapes, the character designs, everything about this game is impressive man. I'm not really big on the Shin Megami Tensei franchise but I have played a couple of games and the ones I played were really impressive. But this is a step above anything that I've seen that the franchise has to offer. Man, the in-depth quality of the gameplay is so cool and I can't wait to get my hands on this. The whole collecting and fusing of the characters is still present in this game and man, it's not really much I can say, the trailer speaks for itself. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is scheduled to release on November 12, 2021 and this will be a worldwide simultaneous release. Now, there are a bunch of other third and first party games that were announced during this direct. You had Life of Strange True Colors, that brand new Guardians of the Galaxy game made by Ubisoft, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, there's also Dragon Ball Z Kakarot which I was really surprised to see and this also comes with a brand new expansion for the Nintendo Switch. Also, a brand new Fatal Frame game called Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water is heading to the Nintendo Switch as well. Danganronpa Decadence is also getting a really cool collector's edition for the Nintendo Switch. In Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, finally Nintendo is bringing back their classic tactical game. There were some other small third party and first party games that were announced but these are the ones that really piqued my interest. And to end off the whole show with a bang, Nintendo had a short presentation for the Legend of Zelda franchise. We got our first look at some gameplay for the Age of Calamity DLC expansion pass and it looks impressive. We got some new weapons, some new enemies, and a brand new playable character like they already stated so this was pretty dope. Plus, the motorcycle from the original Breath of the Wild game is in Age of Calamity so this is really hype man. This DLC expansion releases this week on June 18th, 2021. Nintendo also revealed a brand new Game & Watch edition for the Legend of Zelda franchise. It's quite similar to what they did with the Mario 35th anniversary and this comes with 4 classic games and is scheduled to release on November 12th, 2021. Hopefully I can get my hands on this. And to end it all, Nintendo gave us our first look at some gameplay from Breath of the Wild 2. Damn it man, this game looks so good. The graphics, the character design. This is a clear step above the original Breath of the Wild game and Nintendo confirmed that in Breath of the Wild 2, you will be exploring the sky as well as the land below. This made Skyward Sword HD a must play before adventuring in Breath of the Wild 2. As you can see from this trailer, Link looks a lot different. He has longer hair, he also has this strange gauntlet wrapped around his arm, the same one that was wrapped around that dead body that was showcased in the first trailer. This gives Link some brand new powers. One that was really cool to see is that he has the ability to phase through inanimate objects. Man, Nintendo really stepped the game up with Breath of the Wild 2 and I'm very impressed. The entire Direct was very well put together. I was blown away by the entire show and if I could give it a grade, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Of course, there are some things that we all want to see within this Direct that weren't showcased. For me personally, it was Bayonetta number 3 but we probably will see this game at the end of the year so I'm not too bummed about that. But as far as E3 in general, Nintendo won E3 hands down no questions asked. Alright everyone, 
that's going to do it for this video. What are your thoughts on everything that was discussed here? Please let me know down in the comment section. And don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Plus, if you want to support this channel financially, become a member by hitting that join button right below this video. The cost is only 99 cents per month and perks are included. And as always, remember to keep it locked here at Around the Clock. We're here. We focus on Nintendo gaming news around the clock. I'll catch you guys in the next one.